Hi everyone. I'm going to show you something you won't find anywhere else. And that's how to add Wi-Fi to any ordinary speaker so that you can play music from a phone app to that speaker of your Wi-Fi network. Because you get to choose the speaker, you can get the thunderous room shaking sound of a floor standing speaker, or you can save space and money with a small bookshelf type. No manufacturer makes a box like this for converting the existing speaker. So if you want one, you have to put it together yourself. Don't worry, it doesn't take any electronic or woodworking skills. And I'll show you how to mount it to your speaker in a way that it can be removed without leaving a mark. So that you can add Wi-Fi to a precious vintage speaker if you want to. If you have more than one Wi-Fi speaker, they can be linked together to synchronize the music between different rooms of your home. And you can get true stereo sound by sending only the right channel to one speaker and the left channel to another. I'll show you now how easy it is to link these speakers together. I've already set up the Wi-Fi on these two speakers. They're in two different rooms. Just go to the Devices tab on the free phone app. There's a little icon that looks like a link in a chain at the top right corner of the box for speaker one. Click on it and you'll see the other speakers listed. Click on speaker two. I selected these speaker names during the setup, but you can use any names that you want. You'll see the two speakers linked together in the app. The speakers will stay linked until you unlink them. And you can add more speakers so you can play in as many rooms as you have speakers. The master volume control is the top one, but we can adjust them independently if we want to. To select your favorite music source, just go to the Browse tab. Now, the music you play here will also be playing here. Now, I'll show you how to set up two speakers as a stereo pair. I named this one Right Speaker in the app, and the second one Left Speaker. To separate the two channels, go to the information box for each speaker, at the bottom right, there's a little gear wheel. And to the left of that, there's a small circle. Inside that circle, you'll see the letters L and R, which means that both the left and right channels will play on that speaker. If you touch the circle once, it will only display the letter L, which means the speaker will only play the left channel. If you touch the circle again, it will only play the right channel. Make sure that the R is in the little circle for the speaker on the right side and L is there for the speaker on the left. Then we go back to the linking icon and link the speakers together as before. Now we can play in stereo with no wires between the speakers. So how do you build and set up the Wi-Fi receiver box? I'll show you that now. It's not the only way to do it. But it is a way for you to build your own Wi-Fi speaker without having any special skills or tools. The heart of this project is this amplifier streamer board that you can get from Arillic.com. But you'll also need a short piece of speaker wire, a plastic box, and a set of M3 nylon standoffs. I'll link in the description to where you can get all of this stuff. These are all the tools you need. They're all simple and expensive hand tools. You may not have a step drill like this one or a pin vise like this one. I'll leave a link to where you can get them. Before we start, we need to check that the stereo mono jumpers, and there's four of them here, are in the mono position. Even if we intend to use the speaker as one of a stereo pair, they still need to be in the mono position. So this is showing the correct position. If you see them looking like this, then you have to move them over. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the lid off this box. That'll give us a slimmer profile on the back of our speaker, and it'll give us better ventilation for keeping the electronics cool. This lid is very easy to cut off using a knife, but still be careful. These plastic boxes are very cheap, and they come in packs of four. So if you mess up, you can just call it practice. Next, I'm gonna use the lid of the box, and I'm gonna cut it so it's just a little bit larger than the board itself. So I mark out where the board fits on this lid. Here we go, and we'll cut all of this away. It's easy to cut the flat portions of this with a pair of scissors, but if you try and cut the corners with scissors, you're gonna crack the box. So we need to cut notches to allow the scissors to pass through. 
We don't want to crack the plastic while we're cutting the notches, so we have to make some perforations around where we want to cut them. To do that, we'll use this pin vise. The small drills that fit into the pin vise are supplied with it. After the perforations, it's easy to cut the notches out with a knife. The notches on the edge of the box allow the scissors to pass through so we can cut the lid without cracking the plastic. I've just lightly taped the board to the base that we've just made so that it doesn't move when we mark out the position of the holes. Thin black marker is what we need. We'll use the pin vise to make small starter holes like this. We just want to let the rotation of the tool do cutting rather than try and push it through. Now that we have the four starter holes, we can use a 1 8 inch drill bit on the pin vise to make the holes the final size. The 1 8 inch drill takes a little bit more time than the little tiny starter holes. Take the smallest size screw from the set of nylon standoffs and push it through one of the holes. Then take the smallest size standoff, the six millimeter, has a six millimeter body and thread it onto the screw. And repeat that for the other three holes. And this is the finished base ready to mount the board. The holes should all line up and the board should just go on perfectly. Now we use these 20 millimeter threaded pillars and we just screw them onto the standoffs that are protruding through the board. We're going to use the base of the original box as the cover and we need to mark out the screw holes. And the important thing is to get a little spacer in front of the board like this. And what I'm using is a piece of spare plastic that I cut from the original lid. The purpose of using a spacer is so that this switch in the corner of the board is the right distance from the cover because we're going to be cutting a button into the cover. Cover any of the connectors except for that switch with the piece of scrap plastic and then place the cover over the top. The latch of the box goes by the spacer. Now we need to mark the hole positions for the cover screws and these thread into the four black pillars. Now we'll make the small starter holes in the cover. Then we'll use the 1 8 drill to cut the holes to their final size. We'll use the same size screws that we did in the base and just push them through the cover holes. And with a little luck, the screws will line up perfectly with the pillars. These are close enough, but I can't find my screw. Oh, here we go. Here's the screwdriver. Now that we have the cover on, we have to mark the positions of the holes and apertures for the connectors and the switch. For the speaker, we'll use the connector that goes into it. This is supplied with the board and we'll turn it on its back so that we can mark around it. We line it up with the speaker connector and then just mark where it falls on the cover. For this on off button at the end, we're going to mark a little 3 8 inch U around the position of the button. So now we need to remove the cover so that we can cut the holes and the slots. To punch the two large holes, we use a step drill. This fits into any screwdriver that has removable bits. If you have an electric screwdriver, that works really well, but I'll use a regular hand screwdriver. First, we should drill a starter hole and enlarge it with our 1 8 drill bit. Then we can use the step drill until the holes are big enough to accept the power and aux connectors. To cut along the lines we drew, we must first make perforations with the pin vise and then cut them with a sharp utility knife just like the notches we cut when we made the base. And we just want to do this quite gently with a rocking motion. If we use too much force, we will crack the plastic. I did it. I cracked the plastic. After it's been cut and trimmed, it should look like this. Now, if it ends up looking like this with this piece removed because the plastic cracked, that's perfectly okay. With the cover back on, we can see that everything's lined up okay and we get a nice click with the on off switch. These things here are the antennas for the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. What we have to do is just remove the backing paper and stick them in this area here. The placement isn't critical as long as they don't overlap. And this is the Wi-Fi box ready to be mounted to the speaker.
I'll be putting the Wi-Fi box into this area of the speaker like this, and we'll be using four 3M hanging strips. We start by peeling off the backing on two of the strips and sticking them down to our Wi-Fi box. Then we very lightly press the ends of the hanging strips into the other side and peel off the backing. Next, we carefully position the Wi-Fi box on the speaker and push down firmly. Now we remove it quickly and these hanging strips should be in the right position on the speaker and we press them down firmly and leave them for an hour. Now you can place the Wi-Fi box on the speaker, pushing it down firmly so that the hanging strips click together. Now, if it doesn't click properly, you may have to remove the cover and the board and push the strips down so that they click. There, now it's firmly attached on both strips all the way across and I can replace the board and screw the cover on. To make the connection to the speaker terminals, we're gonna to need to strip the insulation off the end of the little piece of speaker wire. This is 18 gauge wire. It's fine to use 16 gauge or 20 gauge. First, we have to separate the two sides. Now I'll use a pair of scissors to strip the insulation. I'm gonna cut off about half an inch. We just nick the insulation and then pull and I have stripped the end. It's ready to go into the terminal. This is the plug for the speaker wire. This end plugs into the board and the wires come out of this side. You want to line it up so that the side with the screws is facing me. With it lined up that way, the red wire goes into the screw terminal on the right, far right, and the black wire goes into the screw terminal on the far left. We can bend over the ends of the wire so we've got a double thickness. It'll grip better. There we go, it's nice and tight. Connect the speaker wire, we just connect the black side to the black and the red side to the red. And then we just plug the speaker connector into the board. Snaps in. I'm using a 19 volt power supply. It's a 90 watt power supply, which gives plenty of power for this speaker. If you don't buy the one in the link, make sure the one you get has the right size barrel connector. The power supply plugs in here. Now we're ready to set the speaker up on the network. To set up this speaker, we need to download and open the free Arillic 4Stream app that we can find on the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. The 4Stream app won't find your device on Wi-Fi at first because it still needs setting up. So when the Add New Devices button appears, select it. You'll get this screen, which asks you to check for a flashing light. It's normal for the light on the speaker to be flashing really fast when it's first turned on, but once it's flashing steadily, about once a second, entering setup mode, follow the instructions in the app to finish the setup. Click on the indicator is blinking button. On the next screen, select while using the app and then allow. Here you see it's found our Wi-Fi speaker. So press the set up this device button. On the next screen, enter your Wi-Fi password, click next. Once your speaker is connected to your Wi-Fi network, you'll see this screen. Connected to your Wi-Fi network. Click OK. Next, the app asks you if you want to give this device a more friendly name. You can type in anything that's easy for you to remember or select one of the presets. I'll just name it Speaker 1 and I'll call the next one I set up Speaker 2. You can come back to this screen later if you'd like to change the name. The Wi-Fi speaker is now set up on your Wi-Fi network. And we can select our music by going to the Browse tab. Now you know how to turn any regular speaker into a Wi-Fi speaker. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you buy anything from the product links in the description, it doesn't cost you any more, but it does help to support the channel and is very much appreciated. Thanks for watching, everyone.